daily game plan for success. It's Sacks in the Morning. Steve Sacks. Hi, Steve Sacks here with Sacks in the Morning, and welcome to Wednesday, the 31st of May. And today, we're going to be talking about a very, very huh, pretty unique topic because this is military week, after all. We're going to be talking about Mo Berg. Who was Mo Berg? Well, Mo Berg was a professional baseball player, played 16 seasons. Not a very good hitter. He only hit 243, but he did graduate from Princeton in modern language studies. He was fluent in at least seven languages, and he was knowledgeable in as many as 12. And in three years during his baseball career, he earned a law degree from Columbia. Nevertheless, in 1934, five years before he retired from baseball, Berg was picked to join the traveling American all-star baseball team on a trip to Japan. Fellow teammates and baseball fans wondered why a player with a lifetime average of only 243 was chosen for the all-star team with the likes of Lou Gehrig and Babe Ruth. Why he was chosen was never disclosed, yet significantly, while the all-star team was in Tokyo, Berg, who spoke Japanese, slipped away and took covert movies of the Tokyo skyline, Tokyo Harbor, and munitions facilities from the top of the city's tallest building. That's right, Mo Berg was a spy. The movies were later used in the planning of U.S. bombing raids over Tokyo in 1942. Whether or not this event marked the beginning of Berg's involvement in espionage, the Tokyo story forever labeled Berg as the most shadowy player in baseball history. Can you believe that? Here's a baseball player. What do you do? Well, honey, I'm going to go over to Japan right now. I'm going to play in this MLB All-Star team. It's going to be a lot of fun. And, and by the way, I'm going to learn Japanese, and I'm going to spy for the military. Okay. Well, that's what he did. Mo Berg was a spy. And after the bombing of Pearl Harbor, he was working as a goodwill ambassador for the United States. He gave a passionate speech over the radio to the Japanese people about the damage their leaders were causing to their country and the world. He was later recruited by the Office of Strategic Services, the predecessor of the CIA. And there he was sent to speak with Italian scientists to find out whether they were working with the Germans on a nuclear weapon. In December of 44, the OSS learned that renowned German physicist Werner Heisenberg was leaving Germany to give a lecture in Zurich. Berg was ordered to attend the conference and to make contact with Heisenberg. If there were any indications that the Germans were working on the bomb, he was ordered to shoot Heisenberg, even inside the lecture hall. On December 18th, Berg attended that lecture and sat quietly with a pistol in his pocket before a small audience of professors and graduate students. He also had been given a cyanide tablet. Heisenberg did not reveal anything about a German nuclear weapon program during the lecture, but Berg was able to meet with Heisenberg's Swiss host and OSS source Paul Scherer and secure an invitation to dine with Heisenberg later that week. Berg listened carefully to the conversation that evening, but there was no indication that the Germans were working on an atomic bomb. So I think in general we can look at this week when we're honoring the military and just give a great thanks and how fortunate we are to have a military like we do that is steeped in great tradition. Uh, and then when we go to sleep at night, we know that they are there and they will give their life to protect us, just like my son did. And that's my short for today. If you like what you heard, give us a positive review, subscribe, and share. Also remember that the Sacks in the Morning swag is now available on my Instagram site, go to Sacks in the Morning underscore podcast. You'll see it right there on the Instagram and just hit the link. Everything's there, mugs, hats, tumblers, you name it. Take advantage of it.